you want to see something big and floppy? I've got a new hat. What did you think I meant? You're watching The Creaky Blinder. Don't do atheism. It is the most harmful thing you can do. As you can see, it's been very damaging to the amazing atheist. What do you mean, don't do atheism? This is a stupid way to start off a video. How do you do an absence of belief in anything? Look, I have no idea why people like you find this so difficult to understand, but all atheism is, is a lack of belief in God or gods. It doesn't take much effort to not believe in something. I mean, even I can do atheism. I used to watch this guy when I was an atheist. But what? You used to be an atheist? What the hell happened? Now, just to be clear, this is what atheism is to me. Others may have a different opinion on what it is or isn't, but this is specific to me. The reason I'm an atheist, which incidentally I had never referred to myself as until I was on YouTube, but to me, all atheism represents is there being absolutely no evidence to support the existence of a god or gods. And as Frederick Nietzsche said, faith means not wanting to know what is true. We're going to watch his videos and see that he doesn't have any good arguments. Well, there's a bit of luck. As you all know, I do love responding to responses. It's complete nihilism because atheism, they, they can say it doesn't lead to nihilism but it always does. Right, think of atheism and nihilism as distant relatives in a big family of ideas. Atheism is like someone who says, I don't think there's a magical party planet in the sky, whilst nihilism is like the party pooper saying, there's no party at all. Some people think if you start with atheism, you might end up at nihilism's gloomy get together, especially when atheism questions certain big ideas usually talked about in religion. But many atheists create their own playlist of ideas, like humanism or existentialism. By saying that three times fast. Showing you don't need to believe in a magical party planet to have a meaningful shindig. So even though atheists Atheism and nihilism might bump into each other on the dance floor of ideas, so to speak. It's not a surefire thing that one will lead you into the other. And a few days ago, he tweeted this masterpiece. It's so funny because they talk about how atheism is so rational. Religion is for those less intelligent people. Imagine a world without religion. It'd literally be a utopia. But then you see the fruits of atheism in reality. It leads to absolute foolishness. Yeah, but once again, that's nothing more than a blanket statement that you think sums up atheism. And as a former atheist, you really should know better. Because it doesn't matter if we are talking about religion, atheism, or anything else. There is not a one-size-fits-all solution. What being an atheist means to me is probably very different from what it means to you watching this now. And like I said, until I was on YouTube, I'd never called myself an atheist. I didn't feel the need to label myself as such. I was just me going about my everyday life. As the Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And as I say, if you're using the Bible to prove that the Bible is true, then you're just lying to yourself. So to use your own logic against you, Kyle, you're wrong and I'm right. Because I say I'm right. Is that kind of how it works for you? Sounds pretty dumb when you say it out loud, doesn't it? So let's see why TJ says he's an atheist. I think the main reason I'm an atheist is because there is no Whoa. God. That's a big one for me. <laughs> The lack of a God, I think, is probably the biggest reason why I don't believe in God. And I say that there's a lack of God because I've never seen any evidence for God, and neither has anyone else. If anyone had any good evidence for God... Yeah, that pretty much nails it. The reason most atheists don't believe in God is because there is no evidence to support his existence. Now, I think I've said this in videos before, but I could be wrong. But I essentially just grew out of religion. I went to Catholic school, I took my first Holy Communion, I was confirmed. And even when I considered myself as a person who still believed in God, I always had doubts and questions. But if I had to pick a moment, it would be the moment that my youngest son was born with a rare genetic condition that has affected his entire life. What sort of a God would do that to a newborn baby? And for what purpose? And whenever you ask a Christian like Kyle here why God would do that, all they ever really say is, oh, it must be part of God's plan. Really? Well, in that case, whether God is real or not, 
I still wouldn't want anything to do with him. He sounds like a bit of a psycho to me. The problem with these sporadic, really just out there in your face atheists, they say, there's no evidence for a God. Their, their idea of evidence is like, oh, I look at a my, my microscope, I look at my test tube, oh, there is the God. Oh, I look in the telescope, there's an old man in the sky, there's a God. But again, this is a crackers in the pantry fallacy. A crackers in the pantry fallacy? It was a little unhygienic to me. Hold on a sec. The crackers in the pantry fallacy. That makes a lot more sense, actually. But all that is, is a term used to critique the atheistic approach to discussing God's existence. And the analogy revolves around the idea of checking for a box of crackers in your pantry, which is a factual scenario that can be confirmed or denied through empirical evidence. But the fallacy argues that the question of God's existence isn't as straightforward as checking for crackers in your pantry and necessitates a different kind of evidence or reasoning. But what type of evidence or reasoning do you mean? Either there is a God or there isn't. And I think we all know my thoughts on that. And I would be willing to bet my ball back that the other type of evidence and reasoning that Kyle is referring to revolves around saying that the Bible says God's real, so therefore he must be. So in fact, it isn't evidence or reasoning at all, Kyle, is it? Not everything is proven in the same way. Do you prove logic the same way you do a scientific study? Do you prove ethics the same way? No. I actually agree with you, pal. Not everything is proven in the same way, but unfortunately, there are some things that simply cannot be proven because whether you choose to admit it or not, there just isn't any evidence that shows us that there is a God sat up there on his cloud watching and judging every single person on the face of the earth. We can prove God very simply because of the historical record, revelation, and because there are philosophical arguments for the Trinity. Seriously? So even though you can't prove God's existence, and for this example, we will say that God is a single entity, you're saying that your proof is a philosophical argument that posits a single God existing as three people, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, that makes it way more believable, Kyle. The philosophical arguments supporting this doctrine are rooted in both spiritual interpretation and philosophical reasoning. So in fact, what you just claimed as proof of God's existence isn't actually proof of anything at all. You know, he's making a logical argument. Where's the physical evidence for the logic? I thought you only believe in things if uh, the, the, the peer research of the test tube can say it. But there's no physical evidence for logic, for ethics. Logic is more about the rules of thinking clearly and making valid arguments than something physical we can see or touch. But we can see logic at work in the physical world around us, especially when we apply it to solve problems or understand how things work. When we solve math problems or create geometric shapes, we're using logic. The equations and shapes are physical representations of logical principles. Science uses logic to design experiments, make predictions, and interpret the results. The data and observations they collect are physical evidence that can support or challenge logical theories. When we troubleshoot issues with our car or fix a leaky tap in the kitchen, we use logic to figure out what's wrong and how to fix it. So what would it take for you to believe in God? See, it's not a problem of lack of facts and evidence. It's that you don't like the God that has revealed himself. He revealed himself through history. Now, at the risk of asking a stupid question, are you going to actually show us any of this evidence in your video? Or are you just going to do what most apologists do and tell us to read the Bible? Which I have many times. How would you like God to, to tell everyone he exists? He has to reveal himself in history. I mean, it's pretty simple. How, what would need to be true for you to believe in God? How would God need to convey his message? for you to believe in God? Hmm, that's actually a really good question, Kyle. And I'll be completely honest with you here and say, I've never actually thought about it. But if there is an all-powerful God who loves us, I would expect there to be no suffering in the world, no kids born with disability, no wars, no famine. Can you see where I'm going with this? If there is a God, then he must be pretty sick and twisted, given the number of tragedies we see on a daily basis. Scientific beliefs are supported by evidence and they get results. Myths and faiths are not and do not. Who said that then? I know I just did, but so, shut up. Just play along. I kind of view things like science and philosophy and all that stuff as uh, the sober man's take on life and where we came from and where we're going and why we're here and all that stuff. Funny how you bring up philosophy because all the pop atheists have no philosophical training. They do the most basic 
fallacies. They don't know basic meta-ethical critiques like the is-ought problem, yet they make normative statements about, oh, the good, the bad, progress, which is a complete contradiction. The good, the bad, there are no ethics on your atheist system. Remember my community post from last week when I said I was fed up of constantly repeating myself? Well, this is one of those time. Atheists have no ethics or morals is just something apologists say to try and crap on atheism. Let's say ethics is like a big rule book on how to be a good person and make the right choices. Now, if religion is like a teacher giving you a rule book, let's see what happens when the teacher isn't around. Let's say, for example, I was stood on the roof of a tall building with somebody I really didn't like and I decided to push him off and he fell to the ground and died. Does that mean I did nothing wrong because I don't believe in God? Therefore, have no ethics or morals? No, of course it doesn't, you clown. Because we all have a sense of what is right or wrong, whether we believe in God or not. So he's talking about ethics. It's wrong to enforce your religion on other people. If somebody wants to believe in God, then that's for them to decide. Nothing to do with me. But what gives an apologist the right to tell me that I should believe in their God? This is where the problem comes into play. As I said earlier on, before I got onto YouTube, I had never referred to myself as an atheist. But when I started hearing people like Kyle telling people like me that we were wrong for not believing in God, then that changed. The best way to get me to not do something is to tell me I have to do that thing. And that's what a lot of them are saying. Atheists are wrong simply by not believing in the Christian God. But it doesn't work like that. You can do what you want, I can. he can do what he wants. No, but why? Why on atheism? Well, what are these? What's wrong with imposing just an empty, meaningless universe? What's wrong with uh, enforcing my religion by having basic liquor laws? What's so wrong with that? Let me give you another example. If a gay man was trying to force you, Kyle, to attend a gay pride parade, would you be comfortable with that? Would it still be acceptable to you? I mean, you seem to be saying that it's perfectly fine for a Christian to impose their beliefs onto atheists. So by that standard, it must also be acceptable for a gay man to impose his sexuality onto you, or at the very least, make you an ally by forcing you to attend a pride march. If I'm wrong, nothing mattered anyway. It's a big, empty, meaningless universe. Nothing mattered. If, if you're right, nothing matters. Now then, I could be misunderstanding this. I don't think I am, but there's always a chance. So are you saying, Kyle, that your life only has meaning because you believe in God? And that if it was ever proven to you that God isn't real, then your life would no longer have any meaning? Well, it's a bit of a grim way of viewing your own existence, isn't it? But okay, now, that is one of the many reasons why religion isn't for me. Haven't you ever heard anyone say life is what you make of it? If I'm right, then everything matters. Everything you do has so much purpose because we have a God, we have meaning, and we need to live according to the law, to the Testament. We need to re-kinder this relationship, this broken relationship between man and God. If you are right, nothing matters. If I am right, everything matters. Ah, right, so that is what you were saying then. Well, in that case, you're just further illustrating to me why my lack of belief in God is the right choice for me. You can do whatever you like. Saying your life only has meaning because you believe in God is, well, it's really sad. What about the other people in your life? You know, your family. Do they not add anything for you? Are you not fulfilled by anything other than the belief in God? He keeps saying, there's no evidence, there's no evidence. Okay, then why do all these Christians believe Christianity? Are they just completely on faith? There's no evidence at all? Well, as far as I can tell, yes. No, obviously, very smart people believe Christianity because there is evidence. So where is it then, Kyle? And more importantly, what is it? Do you not think if there was any solid evidence showing that your God was real, then somebody would have shared it by now. You're no different to any other apologist I've ever run across, Kyle. You keep saying that there is evidence for God, but what you will never do is share that evidence. Because it's tricky to share something that doesn't exist, I know. <laughs> Let me know if you liked the video. I can do more videos responding to Amazing Atheists. I want to cover the people that I watched in my childhood. It was mainly like Family Guy, Amazing Atheist, Bill Maher. Thank you. God bless. Oh, well, that was a bit anticlimactic, wasn't it? Or was it what we've all come to expect? Just another Christian apologist telling us what we should or shouldn't believe in and offering nothing while claiming to have plenty of evidence without showing us what any of that evidence is. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Love you, bye. All right, all right, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe.
by order of the creaky blinder.